Joy Vlada is an ex-professional soccer player and the owner and president of EduKick International Football Academies. Today on Best Athletes Meet and Greet, kicking off the Player Pathway Business of Sport series, we're going to hear from Joey on how he went from youth soccer standout in California to a Division I full scholarship student soccer player at St. Mary's College of California to Spain on several professional trials to years of professional soccer in the U.S to running an international soccer development program in nine countries that has helped to develop thousands of young aspiring pro soccer players since starting EduKick International Football Academies in 2001. On today's episode, we are gonna be breaking it down into four areas of your path. The first, growing up and falling in love with the game of soccer. The second, turning your passion into a free education the third, playing professional soccer and what it's allowed you to experience. And the fourth, leveraging your passion for soccer into a career and building a business. So welcome, Joey, and thank you for allowing us to interview you today and share your story in hopes to inspire others. Good morning and thank you, Courtney. So let's get started here in the first section here, growing up and falling in love with the game of soccer. So how did you begin your journey in soccer? Uh, it's a great story. My best friend in kindergarten, his father was from Austria. So we got, he got me involved in soccer at six years old, and which was very unusual back then. And, uh, you know, I guess that would have been actually the 70s in uh, California. But it was, a, it was a blessing for me because I immediately fell in love with this game. And I had uh, all of my coaches were German and Austrian immigrants. So from an early age, I just got that real solid base of European fundamental training. And, and I, think, I think I was always going to be an athlete, of course, you know, um, in our neighborhood, we all were, and my older brother. Um, but I took a liking to it from that, from that point and really never looked back. That's an incredible story. And so when did you know you wanted to play at the next level and what steps did you take? Yeah, I mean, really, honestly, as long as I can remember it as a child, when I reached back into my memory banks, it was my dream to, to try to play professional soccer. I remember when we were kids, we used to watch the show Soccer Made in Germany with Toby Charles. You're probably too young to remember that one, but um, a lot of people out there would. And we'd watch it religi religiously. And then, of course, they had the Mexican channels on and, and I would watch it. And I remember thinking, you know, this is for me. This is, I, I, you know, every kid, I think, dreams of, of being an athlete or, 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 you know, some sort of star of some, of some sense. And for me, I found, I found football early on and the passion just, you know, infected me from, from the beginning. So I know a lot of people at that young age, right? They're like, I want to play at the next level. And that's great. But what steps did you do um, to be able to actually get there? Yeah, you know, and to some extent, just my 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 passion for the game had me playing year long. I was that type of kid that was on the backyard juggling con continually. You know, I was really into it. I was doing toe ups while I brushed my teeth. You had the ball in the house everywhere, and you know, so I excelled. And so before you know it, you know, and I remember in junior um, high school we won the city championship, and then. We went on to went on to high school and it was quite popular by now. The high school soccer team, we were one of the best in the city, you know, and it just it led to all these letters arriving to my house and, you know, from universities. And it was it was a bit of a dream, really a shocker for my mom. I don't think she really saw that coming. And uh, and, and, you know, so, you know, from early on, certainly in high school, I knew that I wanted to try my best to make a a career out of uh, professional football. Um, and and I'd, I'd say at least junior high school, but you know, even grade school, it was my number one passion. So I just kept taking those appropriate steps, but I, I ensured myself of a reasonable opportunity of success because I was just super dedicated. So what advice could you give athletes who are watching this, who want to play at the next level? No, it really is. It, you know, it comes down to a simple formula of who, you know, to some extent, obviously natural born skill and ability and strength and speed and all that matters. Um, but who wants it more? You know, who who's willing to do the extra work? 
on a continual concerted basis, you know, over a long period of, of developmental time and years. Uh, those are the people that increase, those young footballers that increase their opportunities of success. Now, another thing is a little bit on the political side, I talk a lot about this with my, with my academy players around the world. You have to be able to self-promote. You have to be able to be unafraid to leave your hometown to go on trials. A lot of play, I remember when I signed my first contract, I almost felt guilty because I knew there were some Mexican kids back in my neighborhood that were better than me, I felt, but didn't have that capacity to think outside their own neighborhood. So you have to be brave. It's very uh, scary to go on trials. You're not necessarily welcome. I remember when I was in Spain and I was like, why are these people not more friendly? Well, it's because you're trying to take their job, right? So it's, it's a, you know, trying, making the, the decision as a young adult, teenager, a teenager, um, you know, young, young player to go, okay, this is something I want. You have to be brave enough and dedicated and committed enough. There's, there's a certain formula in there that will definitely increase your, your chances, right? And then it, you know, a lot of it really is timing and luck and, you know, and um, opportunities really to, to sign a contract. You just need one coach to believe in you. And any pro player will tell you once you sign that first contract, it, you know, it's somewhat easier from that point on. Well, thank you for sharing that advice. That's awesome. And I know a lot of young athletes are going to take that to heart for sure. So let's talk about turning your passion into free education. So what was the process like for you to get recruited to play at university? Well, let me tell you the story because I think there's a lesson to be learned here for young uh, student athletes. So I, my, I was the first person with the last name Balada to graduate from university. So I came from a family where it wasn't necessarily absolutely expected right so my, my so when these uh, you know what happened for me was I got into high school and I was taken instinctively I just took the easiest courses I could at that time um, but then through some really good sort of peer mentorship through my really good friends David Caracho and Corey Zimmerman in particular who came from families that of parents that were college graduates etc I recognized that I wasn't taking the college prep, college prep courses. Uh, and then I quickly tried to correct myself the end of 10th grade, beginning of by 11th grade I was in, but in fact, it was too late. Um, so I had to do one year of what we call in America, junior college, which is the two year uh, um, program. And so, unfortunately for me, we, I was the leading goal scorer in California. Uh, we went all the way to the state championship against El Camino from Los Angeles and ended up losing. And I scored an own goal that game. <laughs> I'll never forget. But that's when, again, the letters were, were coming and, um, and I uh, had, uh, you know, I had full scholarship offers in several different places. And I decided at the end, um, you know, and ironically, <clears throat> You know, going back to when I was in kindergarten with my, my best friend, whose dad was from Austria, his name was Eric Edelmeyer. Well, Eric happened to be at St. Mary's College. And when I got the offer for that full ride there, it was pretty much a no brainer. It was division one. It was, I was growing up in Sacramento and that was in the East Bay near San Francisco, near Cal Berkeley. Um, so far enough to feel like you're away from college, but close enough to come home on the weekend with a bag full of dirty laundry for mom. <laughs> So Classic, it yeah. <laughs> it worked, it worked. And it was good. We were, you know, it went well for me. And, uh, you know, I ended up um, uh, graduating in 1986 with a BA in, in psychology. That's awesome. So can we talk a little bit about that transition for you playing at that university level and being away from home? I know you talked about it was close enough that you could come back, but it's still being away. And you talked about earlier that you kind of have to take those risks to move away to make it to the next level. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'll be honest with you, Courtney. I remember, and I share this a lot of times with my young players through Soccer Life Coach when I'm consulting and mentoring, that um, I felt almost a, 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 a complex of, oh my God, I'm not sure I belong here. I'm not sure I'm smart enough to do this. And, you know, 
That lasted all of about a week to 10 days uh, after landing on campus and realizing, wait a minute, not only can I do this, I think I'm going to be a leader here. But there's a certain level of self-confidence that's required um, to excel in, in anything in life, certainly as a soccer player. You know, be, becoming a, a professional soccer player is really difficult these days more than ever. Um, I think it's, it's clearly the most popular sport on the planet. Um, and that's even become the case now in North America, here in Canada and back in, in, in America, United States. And, you know, having that sense of self and that confidence to believe that you belong, to believe that you have a legitimate possibility um, is really key. So building that confidence, as I talk a lot about, again, in Soccer Life Coach with my players, um, gaining confidence comes from dedication, hard work. I mean, the harder you work and the more concerted you are with your with training, the more confidence you instill in yourself. And that matters when you're taking that next step. So, yeah, when, you know, every time you, you move from junior high to high school and make the varsity team in ninth or 10th grade, and then, you know, and then there's that other move to university, more and more players obviously fall off. More and more players can't progress because of the competition um, in, the, in the sport. And that's true with any sport. So I felt pretty proud. I knew that I was a good player. I was more concerned about myself, I think, academically at the time. You know, I certainly knew and believed that I was at the right spot uh, football-wise. That's great. So you felt like you were prepared athletically to play at that level. Yeah, I really was. I, I, again, I think I was blessed. I have another, you know, our high school coach who was also our coach in youth soccer in Sacramento, uh, Mr. Chet Grant, um, rest in peace, passed away was just a phenomenal coach. He really, he taught me so much. Um, I, you know, what in particular, and I talk about a lot today, it's just the power of a near post run. I, I made a living on, on cutting hard and going near post and taking that responsibility with every cross that came in uh, into every match I played in. I scored a lot of like, you know, little flick ends, little headers, little easy goals, but it was just one of many things that 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 Chet taught us in high school. And I felt like he was just a very intellectual coach. He really made us dig in mentally to the game and understand the angles and the little nuances that could really make a difference uh, for a young footballer. That's awesome, yeah, having that person that could, can help you makes a huge difference, right? And I'm sure you're that person for so many athletes today. Um, so what advice could you give athletes who are getting recruited to play at university? Well, I mean, there's tons of advice. I mean, the main thing is if they're getting recruited for universities, I think one of the main things, and I talk about this a lot, is you have to be, and this is something that best athletes, and I think you people do, are going, doing so well, it's going to be such a service to so many players, not just in Canada, but worldwide, is you have to have an, a, pro, a proper assessment of how good you are. Okay. Because are you applying to division one schools, division two schools, division three schools, NAIA? If you, if you're a division three player and you really can make a, a roster, but you're only uh, applying to division one schools, you may have a problem. You know, I've got a good friend. Again, I went to San Diego. He was a great player. He's the MVP of the high school all-star game. Chose San Diego State at that time, which was one of the top soccer programs in the nation at that time. And ended up getting cut and getting disillusioned, stopped playing. So I, I really think it's very – that players need to carefully analyze the level of college or university soccer – that they're trying to penetrate, that they're trying to, to join. And again, I think that's something that um, the team at Best Athletes can really help uh, young players with tremendously. Yeah, definitely. It'll make a huge difference to see where you're up and kind of like who you're up against, right? Absolutely. And you need to know, you need to be realistic in football. And this is something, again, it's going back to soccer, soccer life coach again, a lot of my uh, conversations are in fact with the parents. And in, in being realistic about junior or, or their daughter, where they're at in the game, 
and and strategizing around that. Um, but when you have some definite information, um, you know, um, about, you know, where, where a child is as compared to other, when a player is compared to others, then it might be easier to make that assessment. But yeah, going into university, the main, the main concern needs to be cons the consideration of what level of university soccer that you're trying to apply to and, and, and what that team you're trying to make. Yeah, that's great advice. Thank you for sharing that. So let's move on to playing professional soccer and what it allowed you to experience. So what was the journey like to play professional soccer? Well, I mean, listen, you know, I remember at St. Mary's when all my classmates were, you know, doing internship interviews in San Francisco and trying to, you know, you know, aggressively find that entry level job and all that. I was um, off to Spain with a Brazilian agent to for my first trials and my first one I was with Jerez de la Frontera in the second division the second a division in Spain um and you know I mean geez yeah I, I the sense of self the confidence the the intercultural competence the ability to learn Spanish because I stayed there for two years the friends that I made, the relationships. I mean, the list goes on and on and on the, of how the effort to become a professional footballer, the pathway um, helped me as a young man with my sense of self, with my, um, you know, my ability to expand again out of my neighborhood and understand sort of my potential in this wider world uh, that included, you know, Europe and other places through my travels with soccer, um, really changed me. And certainly I look back on it now and um, of all the things I've accomplished in my life, university, degree, pro soccer, you know, um, other things, I didn't do some acting as a player, I did some stuff that was really cool just because I was brave enough to try. But the one thing I'm mostly proud of is um, that I learned Spanish. It's, it's really the one thing that, even as an Italian-American, I'm just so happy to learn Spanish. It's such a popular, important language. And they give me, to allow me the opportunity to communicate with so many more people. So, you know, and, and that's something that happens to a lot of footballers. Their football often makes them become more what we call interculturally competent, which is that ability to to grow to know and understand a culture that's not your own and i think that's huge whether a player you know makes it to the professional ranks or not um, that's something we talk a lot about at educate that ability to leave your neighborhood to grow and to become interculturally competent to learn a language to learn a different culture mm -hmm. and then most importantly you know, for young people, so then to understand your, your possibility, your potential within that much wider world. Yeah, definitely, especially moving somewhere and have, you know, being in a different culture, it's so important to learn about it and embrace it. Yeah, absolutely. Otherwise, you know, it's, a, in my opinion, a waste of time. And I do remember when I was in Madrid, uh, I would teach it, I was teaching English in between trials. Uh, I'm just training all day and, and teaching English in the evening. And, and um, a lot of my colleagues in uh, teaching English were from England and other places. And some of these guys had been there for years and did not speak Spanish or did not speak well. It's because they spent all their time in, in a little bubble community with their own people inside Madrid and never really reached out. Whereas when I got there, I was like, I didn't want to spend time with anyone that wasn't Spanish, Spanish girlfriends, Spanish teammates, training with my Spanish friends. And, and, you know, um, so I made a concerted effort. Uh, I even took a college textbook with me to Spain and I would read a couple of pages every night before I went to sleep and do the exercises, two or three pages and fall asleep. And I got through that entire two semesters of Spanish on my own. And I just think that, you know, that was the sort of drive that I had and maybe still do, hopefully, 
that was that allowed me just to do you know a few extra things in my life and i think that the world is so competitive these days that for the young people that i mentor and consult and, and my players uh, through educate i spend a lot of time talking about um, goal setting and and drive and commitment because it, it makes all the difference at the end of the day absolutely so let's talk about what the highlight of your playing career was. You know what I was just talking, I was, we've been doing a lot of texting uh, with my friends and stuff because of COVID, right? And, you know, um, you know, the whole Zoom thing. And, but I was just uh, watching a highlight of Dennis Bergkamp and one of his fantastic goals that he scored against Casey Keller. It was uh, Arsenal against Leicester years ago but I, I saw the highlight and it just made me remember um it was both sad and special but when i was playing for sacramento in the old leagues before the mls and we were playing against portland and casey keller was playing the, the great american goalkeeper was playing for portland and i scored and i scored a goal to win the game but it was very emotional because one of my best friends that I mentioned earlier uh, that helped influence me academically in high school, David Caracho, it was his wedding day back in Minnesota. And of course, I'm a professional footballer and I couldn't go. And that really bothered me. So I remember scoring that goal and uh, in the locker room in there in the, in the stadium there in Portland and uh, getting up on the trainer's table and getting everyone to be quiet so I can tell them, you know, that that goal was for Caraccio and, and his wedding. And that, that always sticks in my brain. There's a lot, there's 10,000 memories, but that went on. That one just came up the other day when I saw it. And I, so I teased my friends. I said, hey, you guys know what Dennis Burkamp and I got in common? <laughs> They're like, what the heck? And I go, we both scored on Casey Keller. Uh, <laughs> no, I, was, I was just teasing because obviously Dennis Burkamp and I don't allow, don't, Really, I don't believe I should be mentioned in the same sentence. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. So that's an amazing highlight, and I'm sure of, of many that you have. But what was one of the biggest challenges that you faced in your playing career? Oh, for sure. You know, I remember I was playing for Santa Barbara and um, the APSL now, American Professional Soccer League. And, uh, you know, I got hurt. We were playing against Colorado, and... Um, I took a tackle and, and, and it hit me so hard um, um, that actually it was, it was a Frazier who was the assistant coach at TFC for several years um, was the player that did it. And, um, and um, you know, it tore the, the muscle from the patella and um, I went, uh, we went into overtime that day and, and it came off just for that short little break. And then the, the doctor was looking at me and goes, yeah, I can't go back in. I go, what do you mean? He goes, you're torn. The muscle was like hanging over the, 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 the kneecap. And um, so that was, that was brutal. And that was, I was so lucky with injuries that that was the first major injury that I did endure. So that, that, we all know that injury is part of football, part of soccer, part of this injury sport. But uh, that was a challenge for me mentally. Because in football, you know, whether any footballer wants to admit it or not, there's that fear of failure. There's that fear of being replaced. That's that fear of, of, of an injury taking you down. So, you know, I remember that as being psychologically really, real challenging time. Um, and so, again, you know, it, what's the advice? What's the lesson? You know, the way I went about the rehab was, you know, you know, like a champion. I, I went crazy and I was committed to getting back and I was able to get back that same year. Again, this was a bit um, we made the decision that he, had, he said we can go in and we can see if it's if, a, if it's a tear that we can sew back up or we can just rehab it. If we go in and cut, cut you open and we can't sew it up, then we're just going to stitch it back up. But if we can, it will slow down. It will speed up your rehab. You get back a little bit faster. I said, well, let's go. Let's cut it up and see what's in there. And he was, we did that. And he, and Dr. Ryu, he was also the LA Laker uh, surgeon, but he happened to live in Santa Barbara and um, he did great work and he was able to stitch it up. And I was able to get back. And I remember um, on the way back, I, I also, 
I scored two goals against Los Angeles to get us into the playoffs. And I was back for like the last three or four um, league games. One of them was that game, which was pivotal because it allowed for us to proceed into the playoffs that year. We had a really good team in 1990 with the Real Santa Barbara. Talk about a comeback. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah, I feel like, like you said, a lot of injuries, even though it's a physical injury, it's a lot to do with mental, right? And getting through that as well. And I yeah, know a lot I mean, of athletes struggle coming back into playing after an injury like that. Yeah, I mean, you know, men, it's everything's mental, right? And particularly a, a setback. And, and for athletes, you know, the, the most, you know, obvious setback is an injury. So, but, you know, the game, the game is mental, um, you know, pro- progressing in life and, and, you know, and, and, and reaching your goals is, is as much a, a mental exercise as it is anything else. So true. So what was like, what was the transition out of playing like for you? Yeah. I mean, again, it, it's it's a bit of a, a challenge for for professional athletes and even for us that didn't have that sort of you know we were really the lost generation we were after the the NASL which is a very successful North American league and before the MLS and we all see how successful the MLS has become so it was a tough time for us in in, in those generate in that generation in between we didn't make the money the other play that they make now and and the leagues weren't as solid. There were a lot of full teams folding, that sort of thing. But the transition out for me, you know, was probably somewhat easier than some people because I did manage to get myself educated through that scholarship at St. Mary's. I did manage to learn Spanish fluently, read and write fluently. Um, so I was able to transition into jobs where I moved back to Santa Barbara uh, as a high school counselor and then later working in um, anti-tobacco, working for American Heart Association, doing other jobs. And that, and that was good. And that was for my transition out. Um, there was that bit that we all miss of kind of, you know, where's that kid asking for my autograph and sort of thing. And that sort of goes away. Um, you have to be humble and, and realizing that that was a time in your life. And, and um, you know, you're sort of living a, a real high, high, and you come back into a more calm sort of existence of, okay, well, that was then, and this is my new life now. But I was able to, you know, to get jobs and, and, and move on rather quickly um, because of, again, because of my education, in particular, my language. Um, and, 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 and again, that, that to me, uh, I think it was the pro soccer that made me then realize, okay, well, this transition into a high school counselor and, and is good. And of course, while I was doing that, I was also a club pro. So I trained one team Mondays and Wednesdays and one Tuesdays and Thursdays and piecing together a decent little salary um, and um, living re- relatively comf- comfortably. But still didn't feel like it was enough. There's got to be something more for me out there. And I think it was that footballer spirit in me that was like, wait a minute, you know, what else could there be? So while I had those day jobs, um, I actually started writing the first web pages um, of Educik with this sort of bigger dream. I just knew that I wanted to do something more significant. And of course, my passion was always soccer and you know, for me to combine, you know, progressive professional academy training with education was the real, I think, secret to the success of my company, right, is education, kick a ball, educate. And I, you know, a lot of ex-pros do soccer camps and that sort of thing. But I wanted my project, my, my educate to be different. You had to get on a plane to come to my program. You had to follow some academic pathway while you're in the football academy. Um, so I transitioned, uh, you know, pretty much in that way. And I uh, was really fortunate, uh, again, that I was able to have that, min- that minimal education and that linguistic ability that helped me secure those jobs in Santa Barbara, where there was a, obviously in California, a really high uh, uh, population of Spanish speaking people. 
Yeah. So now talking about leveraging your passion, as you mentioned, for soccer into a career and building a business. So let's talk a little bit more about what Educick is and, and how it got to be where it is today. Oh, wow. Woo. <laughs> 20 years, 20 years in May incorporated. Um, just, just reminds me how old I am. No, no, it's, no. Been, <laughs> it's been great. It's been a blessing, Courtney. Absolute blessing. I sometimes don't remember all the hard work and I'll wake up and I'll come down to my desk here and I'm like, could this be any better? Wor- working in football, working with young, aspiring professional players with those wide eyes, you know, with that passion that reminds me of little Joey when he was 14. Um, it's just a real blessing, but Hey, you know, it's been, it's been a lot of work the way it started was this, you know, I, I, uh, I'm real comfortable in Spain with the time I spent there, right. Uh, those years I spent there trying to play. Uh, I went back to Spain and we started Educick with the simple concept of basically a summer program, short term only, but you had to learn Spanish. You studied Spanish and you did the, 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 the soccer camp in Spain. And what happened for me was again, just always move looking forward mentally. It's like, wait, this is cool, but it's not enough. You know, we need these kids the whole academic year to really change them and develop them as players. You know, it's great two, three week camp in Spain, but if we can have them the academic year, And so I really do believe I invented the concept because back in 2001, 2002, 2003, you could not find a year long academic soccer boarding school. Um, So that niche I sort of created back then, the light bulb went off and I said, these need to be year long programs. And then because of my contacts through soccer, I was able to quickly move out to several different countries. Um, but the concept of, of a the academic year program with academic pathways, whether they're secondary study for kids still in high school or for kids out of high school, you know, sports science that we do in England or language learning, you know, learning French and con learning Italian in Perugia, learning uh, Spanish in Spain um, was sort of the secret to the success. And it's through my academic institutional partners that we were able to get the student visas for these international kids coming in to allow them to stay legally in the country for that year. And then of course, you know, the easy bit for us was the, was the football because that's who we are and what we do. So little by little it just evolved out and um, the years passed and, you know, we had a lot of ups and downs and certainly recently it's been a tremendous challenge, right? COVID, but um, we're still hanging in there. I've got a team, a pro team from Dubai coming to Spain in uh, next month. I'm really excited about that because I got to get my COVID test and travel to Spain to, to meet them there. And I have traveled since COVID and that's pretty unusual for me. My friends would tell you. So it is all every day I wake up. What I love about Educate is there's something there's something new that comes across my desk. Um, so it's just it's just been a real blessing. And, and I, you know, I'm just really excited to keep it alive and, and take it right into my old age, you know, another 10 years at least. That's awesome. What an incredible story. And congratulations on 20 years in Thank May. You. That's awesome. So talking mm-hmm. about COVID, how has that impacted Educick? And how do you see us coming out of COVID and getting back to playing? Okay, so a couple of things, I guess, that pop into my mind, COVID. Um, first thing I'll say is that a lot of people, and, and we all know this, have had to find ways to evolve through COVID. You know, the restaurant that never did takeout now does takeout. Well, when God willing, this passes, they're not going to stop doing deliveries because that added to, you know, everyone's learned something. What I did in particular, and I mentioned it a couple of times already in this interview, is I said, well, what can I do? So I've been you know, doing things on my website, starting a couple of new websites. And then I start, I got the idea about soccer life coach. You know, the whole concept of a life coach for footballers. And I really, I thought, you know what, while it's, while it's slow, 
what can I do to evolve? What can I do to keep pushing this proverbial soccer ball down the hill, right? What can I do? And, and so um, I came up with the concept of soccer life coach and I designed this program, which is really based around establishing, identifying and establishing goals for young people. But more than just that, but setting up very specific concerted action plans and tasks uh, underneath each of these goals that they can pursue in, in, in a regular fashion with my advice and, and overseeing it and discussing it with me on a regular basis to, to bring them closer to whatever goals or whatever they're trying to, to reach. And what I realized through it thinking that I might use that to reach out to players I did that I don't know, or that might want to do something online that never really materialized. But what did was I realized, Oh my God, Joey, you should have been doing this all along for your Academy players. Like you literally, you know, you didn't realize at the time, but you weren't giving them all of your expertise, all of your care, all of your mentorship, you, you could have done more by applying this new concept of soccer life coach to the player, the thousands of players I've had over 20 years by just checking in with them on a more regular basis. Now, granted, in the early days, video chatting and that sort of thing really wasn't around, but the concept, um, but the idea remains. And so now, and this all came through COVID, I use the concept to try to more thoroughly serve the Educate Academy players and their parents. Because very often it's the parents that need consultation and advice about all of the, the potential and the opportunities available to their young daughter or son soccer playing uh, student athlete. Um, because they're not always aware and they certainly wouldn't have that expertise that a person like I would, ha I would have. So I, I'm really proud of that through COVID. And I think it's just an example of what I managed to do. I bet you, you got a story for me and most people out there that are, 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 you know, sort of those upwardly mobile sort of people that are always trying to reach for something better and bigger. Um, also found a way to evolve through this very, very precarious time in the last year that we've, we've all been sharing this worldwide, we've all been sharing this, this com, commonality called COVID-19. Yeah, I think that's, a, I think, yeah, taking what we've learned during this and applying it and keeping it and helping like your business grow as well and help benefit these athletes that you're working with. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, again, even if it now, now I'm of the frame of mind that it's just a value add to my service. Um, I mentioned that I think I started this in, this niche within the industry of football of year-long academic soccer boarding schools because it didn't exist online. I mean, I'm pretty uh, positive about that. Um, and now there's competition everywhere. Everyone's doing what Educate does. There's a lot of people doing it. It's amazing, um, which is flattering in a way. But now taking now now I find myself now in a more competitive niche environment within the industry of football and so the soccer life coach is you know some uh, another way of sort of distinguishing educate um bringing more value to our product because you get the president you know on the phone not somebody that works for him and you you know that's a former professional player who's university educated who speaks languages that you know hopefully has you know maybe a little bit more to suggest and advice uh, for for my, that client's kids or player or that player himself because a lot of my players of course are young adults um, so again you know that I think that's that's one thing now it's been challenging obviously it's uh, economically probably some of the work with the toughest time that I went through because I've been very blessed with my company over the years um, but yeah you know we, we we just keep our head down and we keep going we soldier on don't we yeah, that's awesome. That determination that you had at a young age keeps going. That's it, Courtney. That's it. You know, that's true. And I, I do believe that there is something to be said for athletes. Um, I read once about the CEO that, that likes to hire athletes because of that, you know, that 
he knows that they spent a lifetime training and working and aspiring for more. And um, I do believe that there's something to be said for that. And that's why I always advocate um, and suggest to my parents, my, my client parents, that, hey, it doesn't matter where Junior lands in football. It doesn't matter if he makes it to be a pro. What matters is the journey. It, what matters is what he learns in his attempt, right? And how he grows, right? Because I really do believe that if you're a parent lucky enough to have a, a young daughter or son who's a passionate little footballer, you're a lucky parent because their football will help you as a parent because football will help help you raise that child in a positive way, in a positive environment, go into the park, smell in the grass, the teammates, you make a team, you got 22 new friends socially, you know, to say nothing. And most importantly, a, a sense of self and self-confidence, et cetera. So, you know, football, soccer is a uh, very good uh, for anyone that partakes. And again, I don't think at the end of the day, all of my academy kids have that wide-eyed dream of being a pro footballer. But I know, and I, in my private discussions with their parents, I do remind them that supporting their effort will always, will always be worth it, no matter where they land. Definitely. So thinking about, you know, the thousands of athletes that you've had the opportunity to work with, can you tell us about some of those athletes who have been part of your academies and where they are today? Yeah, there's, there's several, several uh, success stories. And most of them are very modest, sort of foot in the door, division two, II, division three, go back home to Indonesia and play. My clients come from all over. It's those last two years ago or last year, it's like 30 something kids in our Manchester Academy. And they came from like 28 different countries, something crazy like that. But uh, definitely the biggest story would be Davide Soma. Uh, Davide Soma, what a story. I uh, was born in South Africa, moved to Florida when he was two years old. Come, come to me early on when we were, you know, first or second year before I really branched out with the boarding school, year long boarding schools around the world. Um, you know, and he was a little too old. He had just turned 18 for the camp. And I'm like, you, you know, but he's persistent, you know, and and I said, listen, you, you come, you can help out a little bit, no problem. And he goes, well, you know, I'm going to be a pro player. And I said, I like the attitude. I'll see you in Spain. You know, and sure enough, this kid shows up and he's got it all. We're all looking at each other like, man, how has nobody seen him yet? So I just said, I just took him under my wing. I went all out of my way. Um, we had him right away with some um, Logones in the north of Spain. And they wanted to sign them. They were having financial difficulties and they ended, up, they ended up not being able to sign them because of that reason. And we ended up, I ended up moving them over to Italy with through my, my director in Perugia, uh, Bruno Redolfi. And he was able to eventually sign with the AC Perugia. And it just all went from there. He played in, he played in uh, several teams in uh, Italy and then ended up transferring to England and did several teams, you know, in the lower leagues. And before he, he got a contract with Leeds United and he was known as a super sub. You know, if anyone's listening to this, just uh, Google Davide Soma, S-O-M-M-A, super sub. He scored a lot of goals. And what was really, really special and really, really just heartwarming for me is the story of how, guess who comes knocking on his door? South Africa. The kid's not been there. He knows nothing about He knows much about South Africa. I knew more about because I went to the World Cup in Cape Town. <laughs> but anyway, he ended up signing, uh, ended up uh, uh, getting capped by South Africa. And his first international match, you would not believe this, is against the United States of America in Cape Town. So that's a dream. And you know what? Sadly, it did get cut a little short because of uh, knee injuries. Uh, he's now working as technical director in uh, Long Island, New York, Stony Brook Soccer Club, and, and lovely wife and children and, and beautiful family. But um, definitely Davide, uh, who's now working as the Educate World Ambassador. He's sort of uh, taken on the role of uh, 
being making himself available to talk to any family that wants to hear, you know, his story through through me and Educate. Um, and we're really good friends uh, still today, which is something that makes me really proud. Facebook's been wonderful and allowing me to stay in touch with all my kids over the years, all my players, many of whom are fathers with families now. So it's so gratifying, you know, when they have a birthday or, you know, on a semi-regular basis, they reach out to me and I just love it. And that's, that's for me intrinsically really when i'm reminded all oh, holy mackerel this is why why i do that what i do absolutely and that just shows the impact that you've had on these athletes that they stay connected through all this time so that's incredible thank you so for athletes who are interested in eduquick where can they go to get more information yeah absolutely the mothership is uh edukick.com um our other uh, website, when we've got about 10 or 12, but the other website I'll give right now is footballsocceracademy.com. And uh, these days, it's all a lot of uh, most of my correspondence is really through WhatsApp. So it's plus one, 289-242-1143. But on the websites, they can see all my contact information. And of course, it's info or admin or JB at educate dot com and uh, people can just send me an email direct that's awesome thank you and before we wrap things up is there any other advice that you want to share with athletes parents coaches that are going to be watching this oh boy i would need an hour on soccer on soccer life coach to, to get it all out but uh believe in yourself and and understand that as I, as i alluded to earlier you know it doesn't matter where you fall, where you where you land, let's say, as a player, we all have that dream. We all want to be professional footballers. Um, but the journey will make your effort and your time well worth it. You will learn, you will grow, you'll become more of a man or woman because of, of your journey in, in football. So stick with it and go for it and try to remember one little thing. I used to have this imaginary little boy that lived down the street named Johnny, I called him. And I said, Johnny, I always consider Johnny is like, this guy's always out there working, working. My thing was, I don't care how hard Johnny's working. I'm going to do all he's doing just a little bit more. So you really need to have sort of that sort of determination to give yourself the best chance possible. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Joey. I know the best athletes audience will enjoy hearing your story and we wish you all the best. Thank you very much, Courtney.